All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I've been going over this 10-part series, MVC3 Music Store, and yesterday in class, I went over parts five on edit forms and templating. We got that to work fine, and part six, which is very short, but for some reason, uh, it didn't record, so I'm re-recording this right now just for completeness sake, and have a few things to say after I get done. So this will be a very short presentation. Part six, as mentioned here, covers data annotations, which are basically MVC's way of doing validation. And as the author says, currently we had a major issue with the create and edit forms because they didn't do any validation. So for example, if you left fields blank, okay, for the price field, for example, you'd get an error when you tried to save it to the database because it was expecting a number. So we will add validation by using data annotations to our model classes. As mentioned, data annotations describe the rules that we want to apply. The major ones are shown right here. The ones that we care about for this particular example are required. We'll use, I believe, display name, string length, range, scaffold column. Let's talk about how we use these. We make every field that's in here except for the artist URL field required. So when we first run this, if we were to run it and not put anything in, you'd get an error message after you put in these changes. Display name, as it says, we, we want to make sure that the text that's shown there, for example, album artist URL, we'd rather have that be three words as opposed to just a single word. String length will give us a maximum. We have two, two maximums in there. One of them is a maximum of 160 characters for the title. The other is 1,024 characters for the uh, URL. Range, we use that with the price that we say it has to be between a penny and $100. Bind, I don't believe, is used in here, but it lists fields to exclude or include when binding parameter or form values. And scaffold column, I think we use that one with the uh, ID field, which allows us to hide it. All right. The author says here, for more information, you can see the Microsoft documentation right here. So let's quickly open that up. And as you can see, it's a little bit dated, but it's how to validate model data using data annotation attributes. The example there is not that different from the one that we're going to use, except our examples We'll put the error messages right here. All right, so they go through an example right here. So if you're interested in that, again, it's shown right here. And I'll put it up here also, again, for completeness sake. a little bigger here. And hopefully everybody now can read that. So if you go to msdn.microsoft.com slash en dash us slash library slash little e little e 26, I'm sorry, 2256141, then in parens vs.100.aspx. Okay, that's enough on that. So, first thing that we had to do was we had to go over get rid of this now, and add to our album class these three using statements, which allow us to be able to go in and do the data annotations. So I've already got this done, but I wanted to show it to you anyway. So here's the three that we had to add. And the, always the old joke is, do we have to add that? And the, you know, again, the, the smart aleck answer is only if you want it to work. All right. So those are the first three that we have to put in, the first things. And that goes over and above, over and above the namespace and the class. All right. Next, we update the properties and display the validation values. The first thing I did not put in here was this, where we're telling it with bind. I guess we did have a bind in there. 
and we're telling it to specifically exclude the album ID, which is a good thing to do because we do not want the user to be able to change anything on the album ID. Okay. Well, I don't know what just happened here. You can see my screen kind of went blank. There it is. Wow. So I believe that's right here, up right up above my public class album line. And it is. So we add that. It works without it, but again, it's one of those things that's recommended to put in. So let's look at everything that's in here. Let's look at every example. Scaffold column false, again, works in conjunction with this to say we don't want to display the album ID. Out of sight, out of mind. So the idea is that with it not being there, you don't have to worry about somebody changing it or even trying to change it. All right? For, for the genre ID, instead of showing the ID, all right, instead of actually showing that, we want it to just say genre. Instead of artist ID, we want it to just say artist. Remember, with genre ID and artist ID, what these are, those are the values that we're using to key into get what we want. The actual name that we're going to show will be the genre itself and will be the artist name itself. All right. The title is required. All right. And it must be a maximum of 160 characters. The price has a range of one cent through $100. Again, if you don't put in a field put in a value for the, the title, you get that message, an album title is required. If you put something out of range here, you say the price must be between this. Okay, we could have put required here too, I think, before this range, etc. Maybe we should have done that. I don't know, but the author chose not to. But it will be picked up because if, if you don't put a value in there, it's not going to be between one set and a hundred dollars. All right? For the album art URL, instead of having this be one word, we'll have it be three words. And again, it has a maximum length of 1,024 characters. The last thing that we're doing in here is we're making genre and artist. Those two fields are virtual. And by making those two fields virtual, and I, and I did a poor job probably of explaining this yesterday, but we allow the system do, to do what's called lazy loading. So I'm just going to grab this from C-sharp corner. <clears throat> and as you can see, lazy loading is a technique which loads the data on demand or when it is required. It improves efficiency and performance of the application. So the idea is it loads data on an as-needed basis. So if it's not needed, it doesn't have to be added, which can make your program run faster. All right? I'll just leave it, leave it at that. Okay. <clears throat> So we've gone over all those. It says, while we're there, we've also changed these two to virtual. I just mentioned that. So when we run it, it should look like this. So when we go over and run ours and go to Store Manager Create, what should come up on the screen then is this. And watch what happens when we run it because I'm going to click Create right away. All right, I'm going to click the button. So let's run this. So I want to go over to my index.cshtml and we'll run. <clears throat> and you know what? I know this works, but really for completeness sake, when this comes up, in fact, I'm just going to stop the run right there. Why? Because I really should do a, a save all, a build, build solution. Yes, I want to stop debugging. So a save all a build, build solution, then run it, just for completeness sake. So this is Store Manager Index. We want to click the Create New button, make this a little bigger. All right, and I'm going to just click Create. And you'll notice those are all of our required fields. And as we start to put values in, those disappear. All right, that's pretty obvious. Now, if, as soon as I put in a letter here, hello, now that's gone. 
okay? But you'll notice, this is going to take a, a, about a minute to do this or two, but um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That should be 160 characters, and I'm going to add a few more. So that's more than 160. And I get the message. Field must be a string with a maximum length of 160. Okay, good. <clears throat> so we'll just put in here, rock in the world. All right. And we're down to where we just have the price field is required. So... For a price, let's put in zero, which makes which should change this. Notice must be between this. So let's get rid of that, run it again, and you can see the message changes. Now let's make it one hundred dollars and one cent. And again, we get that message. All right. <clears throat> so I'll take it back to fourteen ninety nine. We don't need an album art URL in here, but let's put in one anyway. I'm just going to put in Rankins. Name, click create. Now, if we go down to the bottom, there it is. Rock ACDC, Rock in the World, fourteen ninety nine. We can edit <clears throat> where we can change title. We can change the price. We can change the artist. We can change the genre. All right. And if I wanted to, I could change the album art. URL, click save. Whoa, not sure what happened right there. You'll have to take my word for it that it takes it. Okay? All right. Um, gonna give me another error if I do this. I don't know. Let's go back to the list. There's one more thing that I wanted to say here. Hopefully, this isn't gonna go to an error, but. Notice it says genre here and not genre ID, artist here and not artist ID, and it says album art URL as three different words. Okay? That's most of the chapter here. Again, why I got that error at the end, I'm not sure. Did it the uh, did it yesterday in class and had no problems with it whatsoever. Um, all right. So we broke those validation rules. You saw the required field. You saw the price. The author mentions here there's many reasons you should do client-side validation. One is if you don't <coughs> validate on the client, you send it right to the server. The user has to wait for the form to be posted. Since the user has to, be, has to wait, they don't get immediate feedback. And since you send it to the server without validating it on the client, you waste server resources to perform validation logic that could be performed on the client. So the idea is you perform it on the client, once it passes you send it to the server and you perform the validation again. All right, that's it. Now we've got a bad news, good news, bad news, good news situation here. Bad news. Membership and authorization is really changed and I might have to add another database. I'm not sure how to do that yet. So I'm gonna, the good news is I'm going to jump right into Chapter 8, Shopping Cart with Ajax Updates, and I'm going to do that in just a minute. All right, the good news about that is hopefully we can do this without needing an admin. Bad news is if we can't, I might be stuck in the water for a while. But I might do 8, 9, and 10, and then either come back to 7 or skip 7 if that's possible. We'll just see how it goes, all right? So I'll be back with Lesson 8 now momentarily.